And hello everyone, welcome to this video tutorial on Crazy Talk Animator 2 on how to use the body puppeteering panel. So the first thing we need to do is select our character. So I already did this, I went to the content manager and I chose my man Saul here and I'm ready to animate with him. So first of all you have to make sure that your character is selected. If he's not, you'll see that a lot of these uh, um, tools on the left side panel will be uh, grayed out. So make sure your character is selected. Now they appear. And we go down to Puppet Editor. And when I click on it, this will by default should appear on the right side area here where we have the Content Manager. Okay? So it's right there. Um, now, I could choose to leave it here or I can undock it. So I usually prefer to undock it. That way I can move things around and, you know, work with it better. So the first thing I'd like to show you are the body animation profiles, okay? So if I go up here, we have um, this drop-down menu, and we have base motions, and we have body parts. So body parts means, well, as it says, you can control specific body parts to animate. And the base motion will control the entire body and the pose of the character, okay? So let's try something here. Uh, for base motion, we see that we have four categories, okay? We have idle, mood, move, and talk. So for idle, we have stuff like, well, just idling normal. I can go down here uh, to preview and press space bar, and he's just idling, okay? I can choose something like uh, angry. Notice also that some of these icons have an F and an S. F means front facing motion. So if you have a front facing character like Saul here, you might want to use this type of motion with the F. If you have a side facing character, obviously you want to use the motion with the S for side. But sometimes you, you can get away with using side motions on a front facing character. So let's try this one, angry. Preview. Okay. He's angry there. Let's say boxing. Now he's ready to dance. Okay. So that's for idle. What about mood? In mood we have some other profiles like uh, excited, yippee, a green, okay, yay, and some other ones. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to choose move. And inside I want to choose walk, okay, and he'll walk. Now, Notice that we also have um, this area down here at the bottom. So when I choose a profile, inside this preset, you'll see that that specific profile is controlling specific body parts, and they're highlighted. Here, for example, in the front walk, it's controlling the lower torso, the upper torso, the left and right shank, and also the left and right feet. Okay. So, for example, if I choose walk, by default, I can, choose, I can use some of these slider controls uh, to control this motion. Obviously, because I'm inside slider control. I can also be inside of mouse control, which allows me to control that tempo. I'll show you that in a while. I want to be in slide control here and walk. And let me just show you. Let me just preview. He's walking. And now I can move these sliders to adjust the exaggeration or increase. Okay. I can also lower the speed of that walk, or I can increase that. Obviously, I can also use I, I can use this this area here to bring the value up or down, or even type a specific value that I remember. Okay. So here we have the lower torso selected. So this allows me to control the hips. I can bring the hips down, or bring the hips up. And I kind of like that there. I think I'll leave that right there. Okay. And the hip motion. I can choose to minimize that or increase the hip motion. Okay. So let's see. If I go to the upper torso, I can have him bend let right and bend left. And here's something I like to show you. This is what we call the real-time slider control, meaning that if I start recording now, and I start moving these sliders in real time, I will be recording that movement in real time. So this is actually a very neat trick that you can use. You can set the sliders um, you know, before you start recording, or you can start moving the sliders as you're recording to create a unique um, animation. So we're going to leave it like that. I kind of like it. 
Let me go down to the feet. Okay, let's see what happens. Feet motion, I want to reduce that. Okay, that's okay. I like that. And let's go down, oh, I'm sorry, we're in shank. Let me go down to feet. And I can widen the stance. Howdy, partner. Where's my nag? <laughs> okay, or I can narrow the stride. Nope, not like that. No ballerinas here today. And I like that. I think that walk looks pretty cool. Okay, so I could stop previewing, and you know, everything is set. I, I, I adjusted the torso, the left shank, the foot, and everything, and I adjusted the sliders. So I can preview. We still have those same values set in. And I can simply record. So let me record now, space bar, and record. So we're going to record for about maybe 5 or 10 seconds because we want to layer another animation on top of this. And right about there, press space bar, and I stop recording. Okay, And we see that the time scrub moved all the way where it stopped. And if I go down here or press F3, I can open the timeline. And we have Sol selected, okay. So if I go to 2D motion and we go to motion inside, you see that we have a puppet clip that we just created. Let me zoom out. Zoom out a bit like that. Okay. This is a puppet clip that we just created. And I can go back and play this. And I can move this puppet clip. I can break it. I can copy paste it. I can save it in my content manager for the future. So it's very it's very practical, you know, what I can do with this clip. So what I like to to, to do next is um, we just created this clip, and now I'm going to go back into the puppeteering panel, and I'm going to record something on top of that. I'm going to blend animations to create a very unique clip. So let me close the timeline here, and um, I showed you the slider controls, and I showed you the base motions. Okay. Um, Besides this, as you can see, the, the, the profiles control preset. These control specific um, body parts okay, for that determined profile. And obviously, um, this is controlling the body for those specific motions. So let me show you what we can do. I'm, now, this time around, we're going to go into body parts. And we have arm, head, torso, leg. So let's say for head, what happens here? Let's choose this tilting one, preview. Okay. And let's choose arm. I want this forward circle. Let's see what this does. Oh, that's pretty cool. I kind of like that. I don't know what in the world he's doing, but I kind of like that. So here we can see that the left and the right arm are highlighted. And that's why um, we could, if we click on them, when we adjust the sliders, I can bring the arms lower, or I can raise the arms a bit. Okay? And I can decrease the arm motion, or I can increase that. See, the, the walking stopped because I only recorded here, so we can try this again. Okay, arm motion. So let's leave it like that. I think we're okay. So this is what I wanted to show you. If I go to mask, we'll see that uh, both the arms are, are, are selected, meaning that both the arms are doing this forward circle motion. Okay, But if I deselect one arm, you'll see that only one arm is doing that, that specific uh, forward circle motion. And if I do the same for the other one, okay, you'll see what happens. So I, I, want, I want to do something. I want to use this profile, forward circle, and I only want to select the left arm. So we have been using the slider controls, okay, with the presets, the slider controls, and obviously I can customize this. But now I want to show you what happens with the mouse control. The mouse control gives me the flexibility to control that tempo, okay, to control that movement the way I want to. So if I, for example, we only have the left arm selected, I go to preview. Um, if I press space bar, and if you, if you do this on your version of Crazy Talk Animator 2, you will see that there's a little icon that appears here in the middle. Now, to me, it doesn't appear because of the recording tool I'm using. For some reason, we don't see that little icon. But trust me, if you go into Crazy Talk Animator 2 and you preview, you'll see that you have a little icon 
wherever you, when you press spacebar, wherever you have the mouse, that's where that icon will, um, will, will appear. So that icon basically is a reference point. From that point, you can determine that you have a circle around that point, and that that circle is divided into quadrants, okay? Just like that. So we have the first quadrant here, second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. So depending on how you, you, you move your mouse, let's say from the first quadrant to the third one over here, or up to the fourth one, then your motions will be different. So let's preview here. If I move, if I'm in the first quadrant and I move up, this is what happens. If I move down to the second quadrant, his arm goes down. And if I move to the third quadrant, his arm goes in. And the fourth quadrant, his arm goes up. Okay? So you can try to get familiar with these motions until you, you, you find, okay, I like to, I want to use this or that. Now, another little trick that I like to do is I first test it with the slider controls. Okay, I see what the motion will look like without moving my mouse. So I'm, I'm, I, I, I look at the motion, I'm familiar with it, I'm like, okay, this is what the motion is going to look like. So let's go to mouse control now, and I'm going to record, and uh, let's see what happens. I'll go up, up, inside, up, and inside, and up, down, up, down, and up, and up, and up, okay, and stop. So let me go back, and you'll see that we have that arm motion. Now, I don't really like that arm motion. It looks a bit weak. I don't know. So if you would like to redo that last part, you just go up and Control z if you're on Windows, or if you're in the Mac version, just Command-Z, and this will undo the last animation that we did, which was the arm one. But we will keep that walking animation. Okay? So let's try this again. And record. And pop 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 Okay, just like that. And stop. Great. So I'll play this back. And we have that motion that we created. Okay. And if I open the timeline, you see that we only have one puppet clip. But now it's titled Puppet Clip Zero, which is basically like version two. And if we create a third one, you're going to see a number one. And then a, a fourth one, number three, and so forth. Okay? So let's try the other arm. I'm going to deselect the left one, and I'm going to select the right arm. And I would now want to record on top of that. But before I do that, notice that my time scrub is here, which means that the time scrub is about at the, at the middle of the puppet clip. Now, I want to record that motion for my other arm from the very beginning. So I want to move that time scrub forward, or I can just click stop, stop, or just rewind from the start. Okay? That will ensure that when I layer my third animation, it will start recording from the very beginning. So before I record, let me go to preview again. Okay. And... I think I can use that. So let's see then. Record and da, ba, ba, dun, dun. I'm going to do a different tempo here. Up, down, up, down, stretch, stretch, up, down, up, down, and stretch, stretch, and stop. And we have just created our very own animation with the body puppeteering panel. So I don't know what he's doing, <laughs> but you, you get the idea, okay? He looks like he's doing a little rumba walk or something. So the last part I want to show you is uh, up here, where I can use a move tool, a zoom tool, and a rotate tool. So I'm using the actor, and this will control um, all well the body of the actor. But I can also move the actor. These are transform uh, movements. So, for example, I can choose something like move. Let's preview. And I can have um bum 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 and I can record that. Or I can try something like zoom. Okay, let's preview. Up, down. I kinda like this, see? He's zooming in. Side to side, nothing happens. So it's just up and down, up and down. 
Okay, and then we have rotate. Let's see what rotate looks like. Oh, too much. Okay, so you can basically control the transform movements of your character through this. So what we're going to do is that we're going to use this transform, zoom, and I'm going to record that. So see, let's see what it looks like. Bop, 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 bop. Okay, and up and down and zoom and done. Great. And now I'm going to open the timeline and we see that we have the final animation, the puppet clip we created. And if I open the transform um, track here, you will see all those keyframes that we just created with the zoom function okay so these keyframes are what are setting that movement that transform movement in my character so let me move this here so every time the time scrub touches that keyframe the character is moving because that's what we recorded okay so that's it for this tutorial um, I, I like to mention one last thing that um, obviously, I, I showed you using how to use some of these profiles and then how to mask things and how to layer animations one on top of the other. This is actually very useful for when you bring in your own animations. So let's say if you have an animation that you saved in the content manager or an animation that you actually imported from outside, you can bring your animation and have your puppet clip inside the timeline and then you can use the puppet editor, the body puppeteering panel, to layer a different animation on top of the original one. Okay, so this is extremely useful for when you want to combine and blend and basically morph uh, an original animation with something, a, a, you know, a little different inside of Crazy Talk Animator 2. Great, so that's all the time we have. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we really hope to see some of these tricks applied in your future projects. Thank you again.